welcome to In My Mug episode 340 on Monday the 18th. Um, uh, I'm your host, Stephen Later. Welcome to my mug and welcome to the news. So Roland is still in Costa Rica. His diary is live on hasblog.co.uk. You should definitely go check it out. He seems to be having a lovely time. Um, I don't think he'll be coming back, which is good for everybody, apart from Costa Rica, of course. Um, but yes, go check out his, his daily diary. Um, whilst on the topic of Costa Rica, um, many have gone on the site, Licho, Don Mayo, Bella Vista, and there are many, many more to go on. In fact, over the next two and a half, three weeks, there's a coffee every day ready to go live on the site, which I am very excited to share with you all. Uh, more Bolivians are coming too. Uh, we have had our second container of Bolivias. Uh, we have been blessed with some very amazing ones, this week's included, and I'm sure you're going to love it. Um, and that was the funky news. So we should get a move on and we should get on to focus on. And this week, it's going to be on um, uh, the youngest region in Bolivia. So the youngest region is a stretch of forest that runs along the slopes of the Andes mountain, goes all the way from Peru through Bolivia into northern Argentina. And it's kind of like the transitional zone before the Andean highlands uh, and the eastern forests. Um, in the early, early 20th century, uh, the region was a major source for rubber and quinine. Um, now it is coffee, citrus, and unfortunately cocoa, which is cultivated to make cocaine. Um, there are also uh, native plants that are, are kind of done there, which is uh, canistel and egg fruit, uh, which are local kind of foods, stuffs. Um, the youngest is famous for having the most dangerous road in the world called the Camo, Camo de la Mitra, uh, which is the highway of death, which I have bored you about many times about cycling down. Um, and this week's coffee actually comes from the North Youngest region, uh, where the bigger towns are Caranavi, Carico, which is exactly, exactly the part that the death road uh, runs through, um, and was the only route there until around about 10-15 years ago when they built the bypass. Um, so that was Focus On. So this week's coffee is at the bottom of that death road uh, and it comes from a producer with a very familiar sounding uh, surname. Um, the name is Beto and it's Beto Mamani, um, the son of the legend that is Tadasio, who owns Fink uh, Canton Uinese, uh, the guy who we forced to wear a Sunderland shirt and actually wears his Sunderland shirt while, uh, while harvesting now. Um, the area is called 18 de Mayo and is a municipality of Carinavi. Um, also known as Canton Uinese, but to save confusion with uh, Tadasio's coffee, we thought we would kind of go with the more local name of 18 de Mayo. Um, there are lots of variations of farms of these names. Um, the important part is to remember the producer, and that's why in the Bolivian coffees we always talk about the producers in the titles a lot. Um, this is the first year that Beto has grown his own coffee. Uh, in the past he's always kind of worked with his father uh, who's taught him lots of things but his father has actually given him this plot of land which you'll see on the map bit which is uh, just for him to be able to grow coffee um, his dad then helps with the processing so he uses the pulper to remove the cherry um, it goes through a dry fermentation uh, for around about um, 16 hours and then it's run through the scrubber section of the pulper afterwards to break down the rest of the uh, mucilage that's on the on the coffee bean. He then transfer it to raised beds, just like his dad, where it stays for around about seven to nine days. Um, they also use a method, uh, a picking method on the farm, which is it's not strip picking as you would normally see in Bolivia, but they go back many more times to the plant to harvest the cherries uh, and they do this so they can be very selective in the picking going for only the ripest reddish cherries um, this is because of Tadasio and Tadasio explained to me that if he does this when he delivers them you know, the coffee to the farm to the mill he's found that he gets more money for it and this is what's important to him that he gets more money for his coffee he's not sure why it improves it I'm going to sneeze any minute now um, 
but he sells it as a specialty lot and he's much happier because he gets much more money so um, that to me is as good a reason as any to to be selective with the picking and to be careful so now it's time for us to go and look at this week's wonderful map bit I hope you all sang the old map bit during uh, during that. Thank you to the person that tweeted last week about bringing back the old map bit music. I agree. I think it's much better than the new one. But I'm overruled again. So we go across the Atlantic and uh, we're going to South America, as you can tell by our focus here, and in particular, Bolivia. Uh, Bolivia, which is just such a beautiful country. Um, as I talked about in the uh, focus on, you can actually see that younger spine there going from Peru into Argentina. But the world's largest deposit of lithium was found in Bolivia, which is handy if you're watching this on an iPhone, because that's probably full of lithium and stuff like that, and batteries and all of that stuff. But here we are, we're going to North Yungas, and we're coming down, and uh, we're going particularly to the town of Caranavi, and we can see there Canton Uinese, which is uh, the Beto's dad's farm, um, which is Tadasio, And it really is just to the left of there where you can see the uh, Beto's farm is. And like they are next door neighbouring. It was the same land and it's just been split up. As lots of the land in Bolivia does get split up. Um, you can see there the little valley. And then you can see Caranavi there, which is the, the big... The big part, and there we've got the the heights. The Caranavi elevation is nine thousand nine hundred and seventy six meters, which is that bit we're looking at there. Um, and then everything from there is up, and we have a circle um, around the whole of this that is around the whole of this town where we buy coffee. The highest point is six thousand five hundred and forty two meters, and that's on the Alta Plana. Um, that is just nothing can live there. Like bacteria doesn't even live there, and um, that was the funky funky map bit. Hope you enjoyed the map bit. Um, as I said earlier that uh, Roland is on holiday at the moment and he's definitely on holiday. I've seen the snaps in Costa Rica. So standing in for him is the other roaster who is left. It is Gary Ebagum, Daft Fact of the Week. Bolivia is 92.29 times bigger than Yorkshire, but they are 92.29% worse at cricket than Yorkshire. Obsessed with cricket. But an interesting fact to kind of give you an idea of the size of Bolivia, you can put Yorkshire 92.29 times into Bolivia. Why you would want to do that, I don't know. Am I determined to lose northern listeners here? Or northern watchers here? I must be. Right, I'm going to wipe you on pause. I have tasting delicious coffee on the way. I'll be with you in just a second. 92.29 times. Who knew? Who knew? Right, let's get into this week's coffee. Start with the espresso. Mm. So what hits you most about this is the sweetness. There is a beautiful dark baker's chocolate in there and a very, very gentle kind of pear-like acidity, but it's gentle, it's tiny. It's all about mm, the sweetness and the smoothness of it. Let's see how this works with milk. This is very pretty. Chris has done this today and he's uh, done an excellent job. That dark chocolate kind of comes through really strongly. Um, mm. Dark chocolate just powers through. The acidity is gone. It has disappeared in this. It really is just about the sweetness and it is super sweet. It's almost like that high cocoa content drinking chocolate that you get. It's kind of, there's a real bitterness there, but then the milk just kind of lifts it up a little bit. It's very, very nice. Actually works better in the cappuccino than I expected it to. I think it's a really good cappuccino. Well done to Beto. And onto the brood. 
Now here the acidity comes running back. It's much more about that kind of pear-like juiciness that you kind of bite in and you get that like sharp, but then the sweetness kind of comes through. And then it just turns into that dark chocolate, that smooth big body. It's a super coffee. It's really, really good. I mean, I'm, like when I knew that Beto was growing coffee, I was like, I wanted to see how good it could be. Um, and I was really hoping, and on a blind cupping table, it was amazing. And I was so happy when I found out it was his. Because it's kind of nice that we're buying from dad and son. Um, although I've still got to convert him into a Sunderland fan yet. But it's delicious. I think it's really good. I very much like working with this family. I have great hopes and uh, dreams for the future working with them more. Right, I'm done. Listen, thank you very much for joining me, as always. And do remember, life is definitely too short for bad coffee. Over.